Hey guys, welcome back to the Quick Speed Shop. I'm Josh, and today's another update video. I want here. It was raining earlier, and it's super humid. Dang. But I'm going to show you what I got going on here. It's uh, I'm back from Power Tour. This is my after Power Tour update. Now it's time to get back into doing stuff like stonework. Bam. I'm uh, digging into a pile of stone I've had for a while, making a little bit bigger uh, trailer parking area over here behind the gas station. My camper chassis. Oh wait, what's this white box? Let's take a look at this. Oh, what's this? Let's see, hold on a minute. Whoa, yikes. So as you can see by the rear door, hold on if you can watch that, let me push it here, hold on. No. Oh. This thing is racked one way or the other. Try to, oh, that's worse, this way. There we go. Well, anyways, got a six by 10 trailer here. My friend Bill brought it out. We're gonna weld on it because if I can get down here and show you what is wrong with it. He brought it over to weld on, because look, oh no, there's huge holes in the frame. Yikes, and we got up at the front by the tongue, there's huge holes up there too. So, no fixing this, he went and bought a brand new trailer. So I ended up with this one. What am I gonna do with it? Well, I've always wanted a little utility trailer for swap meets and stuff, and uh, these things are expensive new. Replacement trailer was like $6,500, but I'll take this one for a couple little uh, favors what i'm going to do probably is just build a new frame right under the old frame kind of match it build it up and set this right on there put the axle on the new tray on the new frame obviously and tie what's left of this original framework into the new frame and it shouldn't really want to go anywhere and if i have to i'll have to take it off but these are really complicated to get the floors out from under them so i think i would just stack the frames make a new frame underneath this frame and tie it in, maybe make new braces to the floor braces, it'll be good to go. And I'll have a essentially almost free six by 10 utility trailer with decent tires that I can use to, to haul stuff. Well, not, if it's free, it's for me. That's what I say, I don't care how bad it is. Bam, winning. Over here at the gas station, I got an update. Since the concrete is done, I've started backfilling my action here. And I've used some more of my artificial turf, and I've made the parking area for this, uh, let's look here, with grass exposed in the center. So it looks like you can drive on it, you know, like a drive line where you would have grass down the center, where, like a dirt road. So I've laid out turf and stoned all this in. And the same thing I've done here. I've done into where the, the tow truck bay is going to be. I've done some grass into there, and then this is just going to be trim down and turn into uh, like matching lawn but when I put the new bay on here which will be starting here in a couple weeks it'll tie out with a driveway going out here's the sign post we're going to build a sign get the sign up get the pumps mounted and everything so we can dial this in I still got to put my sign up top that says uh, that's my station that my friend Jordan and I cut out a year ago that I haven't put up yet but we're working on that so we've just been grading around here I got the dragster stuffed under here we'll do a dragster trailer update in a second but uh that's chilling headed out at a car show yesterday fired it up for a bunch of people they really liked it so it's uh makes a good display piece here under the gas station right now oh i almost forgot i went up and uh, got this at like an estate sale it's an old uh was that bishman or something bishman tire changing machine from way back in the day, I don't know what year it is, I'm going to guess 50s. It's got an electric motor on it here with a, a cord, a really old cord on it. Oh, there's no ground. I'm going to guess 50s, but it's got a lot of moving parts, all kinds of crazy action, bead breaker. I assume this is the rim clamp. All kinds of moving parts and pieces and, and pedals and whatnot here. So I've got to figure this out. Let's look back in there. Oh, hopefully the motor works, but this will make a cool addition to the gas station, a period tire changer, so that's pretty cool. 
risk. So I'm gonna jump on the old Kubota here right behind me and I'm gonna move some of the stone, stone over there. I'll probably put you guys in fast motion for a second for that. And then we'll go inside and check out the dragster trailer and see the updates on that. It's almost done. I took it for this first successful tow yesterday to that little car cruise and the tow's awesome now. I moved the axle back eight inches, fixed the shackle inclination angle. And I need it done for a month from now for the Syracuse Nationals because I'm taking my Studebaker truck and the dragster and a trailer to the Syracuse Nationals for two days. So it's going to be a really big hit there. Hope to fire it up a few times at the show and in the dark and shoot some flames with it and stuff. So if you're going to be at Syracuse, look for that. It'll be there. I'll be near the old school area and near the new building with the Skyway thing, probably back in that parking lot somewhere and uh, hanging out around it or walking around whenever. But if you see it, check it out. Syracuse Nationals, July 14th and 15th, I believe, or something like that. Third week in July. Look it up on the interwebs. Google it down there. But uh, let's fire up the tractor. Get an update on the trailer. <clears throat> I was able to fix it. If you saw the video last time where I had to fail on the trailer, let me go back. I had the axle eight inches ahead and I had the shackle inclination off. I had it this upper mount too far ahead, so the shackles leaned ahead at an angle. When I loaded the dragster on, I went over center and collapsed the shackles into the frame and bottomed out the axle. And with the axle eight inches farther ahead, there was too much tail weight on the trailer and it was. Uh, leaning back. So I cut that all off, bought another set of mounts. I didn't actually cut them off. I just moved it back eight inches. And then I took this and I put the dragster on it yesterday and took the dragster to a cruise night, a local cruise night on the trailer. And it worked awesome. It rides really nice. I used my Studebaker truck to haul it. I got to just hang the fenders. I got to finish putting the little peanut lights in. I've got these LED lights from the trailer store, um, little LED peanut lights. And these, these holes will double as fluid film spots where I can pop the light out and shoot fluid film in there to protect the inside of the tubing so it won't rust. Um, I have a little bit of scraping issues. i got to make a little bit better ramps. The dragster, uh, the tie rod end bracket hit here and rubbed on the frame both sides. So i got to make just a little bit taller ramp. I, or, uh, yeah, ramps. I also need to trim this here. The slick overhangs on either side depending on how centered up it is but I need to notch into here and notch this out so the slick can fit in there. I never, this is the first time I put the drag around was when the suspension collapsed so I never really sorted out that much but the rest of it works good. The car sits on here, it, it rides really nice. These Goodyear, new Goodyear Made in America trailer tires work awesome. I got like 65 PSI in them. They're Goodyear Endurance. I got about 65 PSI, they're, they're holding up good. I've got just some like cheap trailer lights to bolt on with a stud for the back. I like to keep my lights ahead so when you're pushing the trailer around or whatever, if you have the lights way out here in the back, you can smash them off. If they're way back here, they're usually protected. You hit the back of the trailer on stuff before you smash into the lights. So I always try to stage the lights up near the fenders. So maybe I'll show on the end of this video just mounting these fenders up. I'm going to have to take some like angle iron or something and just mount them up here i'm just going to ride about like this and i'll mount them kind of the trailer's unloaded it goes down about another inch and a half loaded so i figured out probably just weld some angle iron to the frame bolt through the end of the fender and i'll probably just have a tab sheet metal tab or like 14 gauge or eighth inch steel tab weld to this upper rail come up and then bolt to the fender here to hold it mount it in three spots get them on there get them painted i've got to finish the wiring one thing, my quick speed shop logo that we put on the back here, I want to make like a, a rear panel painted like white or silver with a light in it. So this lights up quick speed shop in the dark. That'll be like the rear running light 
uh, instead of the three like peanut lights, they'll have the whole thing will light up and say quick speed shop in there. That would, and like red, I'll put a cup some red lamps in there. That'll be pretty cool, I think. A little custom touch, but yeah. Trailer after my initial fail has come right right back around and it's it's coming together good. You'll see this if you go to Syracuse Nationals, you'll see the Studebaker truck, the dragster in this trailer at the Studebaker Nationals. Like I said, I'll be there. The whole thing will be on display. So I guess this video is going to turn like to a vlog. I already showed you a little bit of that stuff going on out back and with a stone. And uh, late now, but tomorrow, I think we'll hang these fenders and button up this trailer. And then probably, I don't know, it's supposed to rain, I think, for the next like five or six days. So this will be a good job to finish this up. I got to get it done because back there, there it is, the Dodge. Buried all this nonsense is Dodge. Before I forget how any of the truck goes back together, it's been, I left you hanging, it's been six months. January is when I put the chassis outside, and it's June. So, six months procrastination on that deal. So as soon as this trailer is done and out of here, like this weekend, the cab's coming back in. I'm going to sand it real fast. I got the paint. We're going to freaking sand it, seam seal it, scuff it, mask it, and shoot it brown. And then the chassis can come back in where the trailer is. The exhaust system will get built. And then the painted cab will go on the truck. And then the truck is going to go back together. Because i got to get the Dodge done. Uh, I don't want to string out any longer it's been. I want to be driving it by the end of the summer here. And once the cab is painted and, the and it's on the frame, I pretty much just got to assemble the whole front of it. Get it wired up. Uh, get the fuel tank and all that get it running, and then I'm going to take my dump box off my blue truck, my 77 F-250, cut the dump box down into a flatbed, and then mount that on the Dodge so it'll have the dump flatbed on the back of it. So I'm excited to get it done, and I had a little bit of burnout with it. That's why I kind of stopped working on it, and I built the dragster, and, you know, things got away from me. So got to get back to it. I... If I didn't have to go to work every day, I could stay here and work on stuff 12 hours a day. But I gotta go to work and it takes all my time. Why do I gotta go places to get money from people to get paid when I could just work on this? I guess I'd run out of money. Okay, it's next day. I'm working on the trailer. I got the fenders mounted. I'll just show you how I did it. Um, I just made a, off my tail light mount down here, I made a piece of half by one, uh, one and a half channel that comes out and mounts up this side. And then there's a piece of strap, flat stock here on the top to get the center. And then up in the front, I've welded on angle iron to get some strength here on the edge. And uh, that mounts up the front. So these, these things are mounted up nice. They shouldn't want to shake around too much. And uh, I've got them both welded. I'm working on that one over there. The passenger side is all set. Well, my, my tail light mounts down there, and I'm going to hang the license plate down under one of the fenders, right or left, I'm not sure which, probably the left side. But that'll be uh, the last step here on the trailer for fabrication-wise. Just clean them up and, and get these painted. I'm going to leave this open deck for now for when I go to the Syracuse Nationals with the Dragster, but I do have some more uh, deck boards that I'm eventually going to make deck boards for the center, so I'll have a full trailer with a full... Uh, deck in it to haul other things besides the dragster, but that's uh, it's coming out good. The fenders look good. They fit fit good. I spaced them up with a block. I've got about two and a half inches of suspension travel before it bottoms out, so I used a three inch block on top of the tire to space out so the tire should never rub the fenders. And and they, I can get them if they ever get smashed or whatever. I can get brand new ones right at the trailer store right down the road. They're like thirty eight bucks a piece, brand new. Main USA steel, 16 gauge steel or whatever. So that should be good there. I do have a quick story. I was out earlier before it's been raining for a while, but I was out before the rain. And I had I had a chainsaw and I was trimming some brush and stuff around the driveway. And I had my cell phone in my pocket. It was real humid. And I must have like, you know, sweated in the pocket. And it, anyway, it turned on the phone and it turned on like the emergency call, like 911 emergency thing on the phone there. And it dialed 911 a couple of times. And I didn't realize I was running a chainsaw. And I shut the chainsaw off, and I could hear it ringing again. I pulled it up, and I saw it was on, like, emergency alert, so I tried to X out of that. And then the sheriff's office called back, and like, hey, uh, you called 911 a couple times. What's going on? And I was like, oh, yeah, 
sorry, my pocket called you. I'm out here working and doing brush. And they're like, okay, well, we're going to send somebody over. So they sent over in a, a sheriff's deputy in a Tahoe. He came by and said hi to make sure that I wasn't like laying in the lawn and lying to him. And I'm like, nope, here's a chainsaw. Here's a brush. Like, sorry, bro. So that was all good. A visit from the sheriff today. Luckily, I didn't go to jail. So I'm going to keep fabricating here. And then uh, we'll take a look at something else and finish out the video, I guess. Okay, it's the next day. I've been working. Oh, man, I'm filthy. I've been working all day on this trailer. Finally got it, I think, done. And I got the fenders painted. And I'm just checking the lights now. I've got the battery charger hooked up. We got running lights there and our tail lights. Got the little peanut LEDs on the back. Got an LED license plate light right there. That's good. Uh, running light over here. Peanut running light. Got a yellow one up front. That's lit up. And then uh, let's check the other side. Boom. So that's all the running lights. Hold on, let me unplug the battery charger. I've already checked the brake lights actually when I had this. I took the dragster actually on here the other day to uh, cruise night and the brake lights and stuff like that worked. So I, I didn't have the peanut lights hooked up or the license plate lights. So that's why I mainly wanted to check. Everything's good. I do have the fenders all mounted, like I said, all painted up, flat black. Got the plate mounted up. I welded a pretty heavy mount to the side of the frame to hold that. The plate will be up out of the crash zone. I still need to put a light back here. I'm gonna build some kind of box behind it, painted like silver or white, and uh, have to put red LEDs in there, but it'll light up this quick speed shop eventually for the rear light. I just don't have time to do that now. I'll mess around with it later. Um, I also notched the frame. I was having problems with the, the rear tires and the dragster where this used to come out to a point, obviously, and it was hitting the tire here and really mushing the slick in. So I chopped this off. Now the tire can come up to here and the, and the slick will clear. It was only into it by like a half inch, so this is going to be plenty of room. I notched both sides. I didn't, when I built this trailer, I just kind of like guesstimated and measured-ish the tires. And if I had made this switchover point like a foot high, oh, actually I made it, you know why I made it? Because the, I was limited my pieces of diamond plate. I only had so much. And um, the, fr the trailer is about six inches longer wheelbase wise than it needs to be for the dragster. So if this whole thing had been moved up six inches, it would have fit a little bit better, but it's close enough. It, it goes on there, it straps down, it hauls good. It tracks really, really nice actually. Now that I've moved the axle back, the shackles are good. All the lights are good. Uh, I did up the wiring real nice, everything's good mounted with these line clamps to hold everything so the wiring's nice and tight to the bottom of the trailer and everything's ready to go. Uh-oh! Look what's in the center of the floor now! It's the Dodge Cab. So I just got this pushed over here. It's on a dolly and I've got it up on jack stand so it's nice and uh, sturdy now so I can sand it and be able to paint it. This is where it's going to live. I'm going to clean it back out. It's absolutely filthy on top from grunge, from grinding and painting in here on trailers and stuff. So i got to clean it up. Um, this is going to be real down and dirty paint job because the truck is full of dents. The doors and fenders are full of dents and a little bit of rust. It's going to be like patina truck. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I'm not going to fix any dents. And the, the cab is pretty straight. There's a couple little dings. Like there's tiny little dings like, I don't know here in the where the cab the box is hitting the cab there's some little bit of damage the roof is a little wonky i'm not going to worry about it what i'm going to do is just scuff the whole thing i'm going to paint the firewall uh you know i got all the glass out of it clean up paint everything the dark sunfire metallic uh all under here the rockers everything the inside of the roof uh the back of the cab below the rear window down to that where that rib panel is i'm not going to paint that because that's going to get some uh kill mat on it on there but you know, like the the floor is painted black i'll probably herculine the floor afterwards so i'm just going to paint the rockers and the doors and stuff around where the dash should be pretty much anything you can see and the outside i've got i think two quarts of this in single stage urethane and i haven't painted anything in a long long time i have painted a couple cars before uh, i painted my amc eagle wagon geez it had to be 20 years ago now yeah 2000 2003 
Yeah, 2003, I painted it 20 years ago. Yikes! I painted that with enamel and it still looks good. That was my first car I ever painted and it was metallic. I, I, I'm sorry, t take that back. First thing I ever painted was a Jeep CJ5, a 74 CJ5 I did. My friend, we did, uh, made like cab corners and rockers and floorboards and stuff and set of buying panels, made it all actually down at my dad's house and painted that olive drab flat green with a black chassis way back in the day. I don't even think I got any pictures of it. I'm pretty sure I don't. But anyways, painted that up. That was single stage urethane. And then I painted my AMC Eagle uh, in enamel in the slate blue metallic. And then I painted my ex-girlfriend's 81 AMC Eagle in the, like the light tan that her car was like the following year, 2004. So I haven't really painted anything with a gun in 20 years. So this will be the first thing. I have sprayed some primer and stuff, but we're gonna try it out. I've got single stage urethane, like I said. So I'm just gonna scuff this all up best I can. Not even spend a lot of time, like I said, the dents and everything. I'm just gonna freaking shoot it and be done with it because the doors are both wrinkled. The fenders are, you know, the hood's faded, the fenders are faded. Everything is just gonna be like a beater patina truck, but that's it. A little day in the life video. Getting an eight, eight things going on here, so that's it. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell for the alerts. Do all that stuff. And tell your friends. Get them to subscribe. And we'll see you next time. I guess working on dodges. Bam. Here at the Quick Speed Shop.